Oh, no, 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 okay, yeah, this isn't going to work, we have to scrap all of this now, my god. Roger we can keep, we can keep Roger up here, but literally everybody else has to go. Maybe Shanks. I don't think Shanks' bounty has increased. Uh, maybe it has. Who knows? Blackbeard's... Okay, uh, we, we find out all of the bounties in this chapter. How many bounties? All of the bounties. Except we, we don't find out about Blackbeard and Shanks' bounties if they have new ones. But we find out all about the new Straw Hat bounties, as well as, hold on to your seats for this one, we find out the updated bounty of Buggy the Clown, which is the only one that really matters. But we also find out about Sir Crocodile, which is a really really big deal because he's never had an active bounty that we've been aware of this entire story. He had a previous bounty of 81 million before he became a warlord, but he was already a warlord when the story began, okay? So that was frozen a long time ago. He probably had a new bounty after, you know, uh, he broke out of Impel Down, but we didn't know what that was, and now he has like a whole new one together in this chapter, all right? And then finally, the biggest one, at least for me, and I think for a lot of people, we get Mihawk's bounty in this, so I'm just gonna do a little dance of joy really quick. Just bear with me on that. <laughs> okay, so we did that. Uh, yeah, that's all the bounties, all right? So there's like a lot of bounties. Bounties for days. Um, so yeah, this whole wall has to be going down now. We can keep Roger, maybe Shanks. I don't think Blackbeard's bounty is staying at 2,247,600,000. If it did stay at this number, that would make him the emperor that has the lowest bounty, and I just don't think that's the case. I think Luffy is going to have the lowest bounty out of the Emperors at 3 billion. We find out about buggies in this chapter, and spoiler alert, it's higher than Luffy's. So if Shanks, Shanks is already at 4 billion. I don't think Shanks' bounty would go down for any reason, okay? So it's either at this, it's still at 4 billion, 48 uh, million, 900,000, or it went up, and I think Blackbeard's went up as well. Probably not like an insane amount, but might be a lot higher than 3 billion. So if that's the case, then it would go Luffy, then it would go maybe Buggy, and then Blackbeard, maybe Buggy, Blackbeard, maybe around the same area, and then Shanks would be at the top right now, okay? Like the stocks, everybody! The bounties are going up, going up! You gotta invest, you gotta invest, all right? A lot of numbers in this one. I have the computer next to me, as always, so I'm gonna be referring back to that to make sure I get all the numbers right. Zoro's bounty, for whatever reason... <laughs> look, I, I didn't look into all of the bounties, like, in terms of the puns there might, because Oda loves number puns, okay? So, like, with Shanks is, it's, you know, she yang q okay? So, Shanks, okay? It's in the actual bounty. Uh, there might be some stuff with the, you know, Straw Hats bounties now with that. I didn't look into it, but Zoro has the most, like, strangest, like, combination of numbers. We'll, we'll get to that. All right. So, um, yeah, this will be One Piece chapter 1058, titled The Bounty Chapter. I mean, New Emperor, but... It's the bounty chapter, okay? That's the one we all care about. We have the cover spread. We have the German double sixes emotionless excursion. Uh, we're all done with the, uh, you know, the Uta side chapters because Film Red's been out for like a few weeks now. So, you know, if you're in Japan and you've seen it, good job. It'll be out here in the States in probably a couple of weeks or months or so. But now the, the Film Red press is sort of dying down. So anyway, um, we have the continuation of the Germa here. So last time, Caesar used his gas powers to create poison poison gas cloud all over the hallway, so then he approaches uh, the Germa here, Niji, Niji, they're all like on the ground beaten up, like Niji's looking pretty bad, he's like bleeding and he's, cause they just got pummeled by Katakuri and Oven, you know, they're strong, but Katakuri was going full power, awakening peerless donuts, they really had no chance in hell, and so I love though that Caesar appears behind them, kinda like, he, he looks sorta like Ichiji's stand, you know, because he's like made of gas, so he's like this translucent figure that just appears behind Ichiji, like, Ichiji, you've awakened the true power of the stand! I'm, uh, I don't know what, st what, what, I, I can't think of any songs that start with gas, so, or have gas in them, so you could, you could figure out what Caesar's stand name would be, but anyway, yeah, I, I just love the idea that Caesar's like, I need to get out of here! I know, I'll cover the entire hallway with poison gas! And then he approaches the Germa, who are currently suffocating on the poison gas, and be like, All right, I just poisoned all of you. Help me get out of here. <laughs> They'd look at him and be like, Wait, you poisoned us, and now you want us to help you get out of here. Yes, that's how you get the antidote. Shut up, no, 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 no. That actually might be his plan, which... 
I gotta be honest with you, it's not a bad plan. It's like, okay, so you're being attacked by Katakuri and Oven. I can help you out with that. I can use smoke screens. I can poison everybody, but you're poisoned as well. So if you want the antidote, you gotta help me get out of here, right? Now, <laughs> the Jerma are like, they have special bodies and they like, science and everything like that. So I don't know, they might have a way to like combat, you know, poisons regardless. Might be like the Zoldix from Hunter Hunter or whatever. But um, in this situation, I, I think really the Jerma should accept Caesar's offer, okay? And just get the hell out of Dodge. So we'll see where that goes. All right, so, um, this is great. We start the chapter off. We're gone. Wano is gone. The narrator comes on and says, you know, the, the Thousand Sunny is now sailing ever so surely further and further away from the country of Wano. So Wano is now gone. We don't, you know, Momonosuke, Yamato, Kinemon, the Scabbards, they're all back at Wano. We're moving on to a whole new chapter in this story. Like, literally, and also, like, it's actual saga, okay? In more ways than one. Um, it's gonna be crazy. Just, let's pause for a moment and think about this. You know, we've traveled with the Scabbards for a very long time. Kinemon has been part of this um, ever since Punk Hazard, you know, Momonosuke as well. And that their story, at least the big story that they were part of, is now over. And now they are back home, okay? Um, Yamato is not with the Straw Hats. Made a video about that last week, you know, so a lot of people are upset about that. But this is what we're doing, all right? It is kind of nice because the last time the Straw Hats have been all together on the Sunny, just taking a nice leisurely cruise, not heading to a battle at Onigashima. The last time they were all together on the boat was when they were heading to Dressrosa. They arrived at Dressrosa, they split up into their individual teams, and ever since then they did not meet up again in one group until Wano when they were getting ready for the battle, but then we had the battle. So this is the first time they've just been all on the sunny together just traveling to a new destination. It's been a long, long time. Over, uh, that was like around chapter 700 where they were in Dressrosa, so yeah, we're talking easily over 300 chapters since we've had a moment with like them just hanging out like this So it's a big deal for me So what's funny though is that uh, Luffy is locked in a large metal bird cage Like so there's just like a metal cage that's being suspended off one of the sides of the sunny and Luffy's just locked in it And he's just like Nami. I'm sorry and Nami is just giving him the business You know what I mean? Nami is going full throttle with this business. All right. She is like Luffy Luffy, we jumped off! You made us jump off of an island! Like, this is not funny! We can handle your crap to an extent! But literally, that was like a two-mile vertical- We could have died! There is a limit to how much we can handle here. So Nami is just fuming right now. You know, it's like, he's like, you know, we can't take this all the time. Meanwhile, Jinbei's in the background. He's sort of like, I, I, I view this as sort of like the mother yelling at a child. And then the dad is in the background like, oh, come on, dear. He didn't do that. It wasn't that bad. And, you know, so Nami is like, like she shouts over at Jinbei, just like, Jinbei, shut up. And Jinbei's like, what? Is this... Is this Conqueror's hockey I am feeling right now from you? And Chopper's like, no, no, you just, I mean, it's not Conqueror's hockey, but you still don't want to get close to Nami when she's mad. And uh, hey, hey, you know what, Oda? I fell for this the last time. Remember when the whole of Onigashima was falling apart? And, you know, it was like, you know, the festival stage was shifting around, and then Brooke assumed that Zoro had Conquerors. And it, it wasn't Conquerors in that instance, but we later found out Zoro had Conquerors anyway. You know what? I don't even care anymore. Nami has Conqueror's hockey. Okay, I'm not falling for this shit anymore, Oda. Okay, so Nami has Conqueror's Hockey. Good for her. Uh, we all had suspicions, but we, we are finally here. I also just love the fact Luffy's locked in a cage, and the narrator caption comes on and just says, Monkey D. Luffy, one of the four emperors of the sea. And he's all beaten up in the cage. I'm like, Nami, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, just, I love that they have that on standby. So, wait, okay. They jump off the side of Wano, they land in the water, they begin to sail away. Luffy's all happy and cheery. It's just like, yeah, guys, I told you it would have been fun. And after Nami stops having a heart attack, she gets up and she just like, like looks super pissed, looks over at Luffy. Then she looks over at Usopp and she's just like, Usopp, 
fetch the cage. <laughs> and Usopp's like, okay. And they bring the cage. You know, bring me the device. <laughs> you know, just like, okay. And then they hang up the cage and they shove Luffy in the cage. Oh my god. Now, most of the other Straw Hats don't care. Zoro's already on the deck just sleeping. So he's just like, yeah, falling off a, you know, giant two mile up mountain, just whatever. Where's my booze? It's been forever since I've been on the sunny and been able to drink some booze. And so Zoro just goes to bed. Um, let's see. Frankie's there and he's really happy because he's like, yeah, the Thousand Sunny is the greatest ship in the world. We fell off of that waterfall and we only minorly broke like one of the yards on the mast. So you have the mast of a sailing ship. The yards are the parts that are like uh, horizontal across the mast where you would actually drop the sails, okay? And he only mentions that a, a small yard. So probably the ones on the top. So probably the only damage the Sunny suffered was way at the top of one of the masts where like the smallest yard was might have just like might have bent a little bit. And this is Frankie we're talking about, so he probably fixed that in like no time flat at all. And so he's just like, wow, the Sunny is awesome. And he's like, yeah, well, the Sunny's really awesome as a matter of fact. The Sunny got a bounty in this chapter. I'm not exaggerating. That actually happens, but we'll get to that. So, um, anyway, the news coup arrives. The news seagull arrives. Robin is the one that gets the paper. There's actually a cute little scene where after she gets the newspaper, she, like, pats the news coup on the head. Just like, aw, thank you. And the news coup is like, yeah. You know, I, I'm sure people mistreat the news coups all the time. You know what I mean? Like, they land, and then they drop off the newspaper, and it's like, yeah, get the, get the hell out of here, stupid bird. I want to read the newspaper. And then the news Coup just flies up and just like shits all over their boats, you know. But every once in a while, the news coup is like, "Oh, thank you," you know. Give them a little snack, you know. They they, they do their job, you know. I don't know what Morgan's is paying them, but it's probably not enough, okay? Anyway, so Robin is up there saying the most beautiful words that every One Piece fan just can't resist, and that is, "Guys, we have the new updated bounties." <laughs> You know, it's like, that's the one phrase every One Piece fan, you know how you, like, you, um, you find out, like, if you have One Piece fans in a room, so you go to, like, an area where, like, let's say there's, like, 10,000 people all gathered together in, like, some big arena or something, and then you just get on the microphone and we're like, all right, everybody, the new bounties are in, and then everybody in the crowd's gonna be like, what does that mean? But then all the One Piece fans are gonna be like, ah! We all charge toward the center stage, you know? Okay, that's those, those are the lines, all right. So uh, the way Oda does this is uh, a little bit different than other times. We don't actually get to see the wanted posters themselves. I mean, some of them we do, some of them we don't. Um, basically, it's just the narrator going over, like, Chopper's new bounty is this, and then we see a scene of Chopper. Nami's new bounty is this, and then we see Nami's reaction. Okay, that's how that's how Oda does it. So, um, however, though, it's important to mention that the, the, the headline is like, you know, one of the new emperors of the sea, you know, Straw Hat Luffy, a leader of a, of a grand fleet of over 5,400 men. By the way, it's also important to mention the, the, the uh, captains of the fleets, their bounties probably went up too. We don't know for certain, but Cavendish, Bartolomeo, um, you know, uh, uh, Orlumbus with the Santa Maria fleet, you know, Know, everybody there, you know, uh, you know, uh, what, what was his name? The boxer dude. Um, the boxer dude. What was the boxer's dude name? Come on, come on, brain. Let's work here. Not Ezo. It started with an I. E Ideo. Ideo. There. Ideo's bounty is probably the highest out of all of them. We don't know that for certain, but there, there's probably went up as well because now they're working, at least from the government's perspective. Luffy's not issuing them direct orders, but from the government's perspective, they don't know that, so they're probably thinking that like, all right. We have the Straw Hat crew, Monkey D. Luffy, bounty of three billion with his nine commanders. Nine, okay? You know, Big Mom only had three, four at most. Uh, Shanks has like, well actually Shanks has quite a few. The, um, the, boss, uh, the bosses on the Red Hair crew, there, there's about maybe, I don't know if there's nine, but there's quite a few. Uh, Kaido only had three with the All-Stars and Blackbeard has the 10 Titanic captains. So if you needed more of an idea that the Blackbeard crew and the Straw Hat crew are more or like yin and yang with each other. There you go. You got the 10 Titanic captains and now Luffy with his nine mighty commanders, the nine tailed beasts 
you know, so there you go. Um, anyway, yeah, so what is it? Yeah, the Grand Fleets probably all went up, and then now we get the big reveal as Sanji's like, oh, Robin, new bounties! And then Robin, like, dodges out of the way as Sanji, like, belly flops onto the sunny, and all of the wanted posters scatter, and then we see what they are. And Oda goes through them uh, lowest amount to highest amount, all right? So, of course, that means we gotta start with Chopper, all right? Now, look, oh. You know, I'm thinking about this from a whole new perspective now. You know what? I used to always think it was just a gag, and it very well may be. I don't want to put too much thought into this because it really might just be a joke. It's like, yeah, Chopper's bounty is 50. Now he's 100, you know? Chopper's new bounty is a walloping 1,000 berries. And... Suffice to say, Chopper's not too uh, happy about this. He's just like, maybe it finally went up. I mastered my monster point. I body slammed one of the all stars. I I, I solved uh, this cryptic riddle to uh, you know not only I, I think Chopper uh, not only solved the the mummy virus, but also then the ice oni with the nebulizer shit. And he did that like while the battle was going on. Surely my bounty will be higher now, and it is. It went up about nine hundred. 900 berries. So it's a thousand berries, which is like what? Like 10 bucks American? <laughs> if you if you do, I, I think the immediate transfer is like berries are basically a one-to-one -one ratio to yen. I did a whole video on money in the One Piece world years ago, but I think that's what Oda's going for here. So it's like a thousand berry is also a thousand yen. And a thousand yen is like probably 10 bucks or somewhere around there american so so chopper you you can buy stuff with 10 bucks you can order some fast food with that up until now it was like a dollar it was pitiful okay he could afford like a chocolate bar and that was it you can now afford like a big mac meal from mcdonald's with a large fry maybe i don't know about that i don't know what the going rate of a large fry at mcdonald's is now but you know what i mean chopper you're moving up in the world okay but i just gotta say because I, I, this is the uh, the paradox with Chopper's bounty, okay? The, the Marines have to know Monster Point exists. Like, Sentomaru literally fought against it, okay? And then later on, you know, the Monster Point shows up at Fishman Island, and they have pictures of the Straw Hats at Fishman Island. Like, like the, their new wanted posters, like, like for after the time skip, these were taken at Fishman Island. Frankie's was taken at Fishman Island, you know what I mean? So, um, I, I'm just thinking here, I'm like, okay... This doesn't make any sense. Either the Marines know that Monster Point exists and it's Chopper, in which case Chopper should have a higher bounty, or they don't think that the Monster Point is the same person as Chopper, in which case Chopper should have his own wanted poster in his brain point, and then Monster Point should have a different wanted poster if they think they're two separate people. Okay? Neither of that is the case, which is confusing, so confusing, and also, it doesn't also even make any sense. Do the Marines not know that minks exist? Because Beppo is on Law's crew, and Beppo has only ever had a bounty of 500 berry. And that doesn't make any sense, because it's like, yeah, he's not a pet, though. He's a mink. He's very clearly a mink. So you could also mistake Chopper for being a mink. But, like, the government knows that there's zone fruits that give you, like, they have to know the human-human fruit exists. In fact, they do know because the human-human fruit sun god model exists. So I'm going to throw this out there. I don't know if Oda's is going somewhere with this or what. Okay. Well, uh, I don't know how this would go, but my idea was, like, Maybe the government doesn't want people to know that human fruits exist, period. You know what I mean? Because the sun god fruit is a mythical variant of the human human fruit, which is what Chopper has. Which also leads us to an interesting scenario where now we have two members of the Straw Hat crew. Chopper's all the way down here, you can't see him. But um, now we have two members of the Straw Hat crew that technically have the same type of devil fruit. Interesting, they both have the human human fruit. Weird. Anyway, um, maybe the government's like, we don't want people to know the human human fruit exists at all. Okay, and so that's why we're just going to classify Chopper. Like, he clearly has it, but we're just going to make sure it's not a big deal. We'll just call him a pet. Okay, I don't know what the situation up with Beppo is. I guess the Marines just hate minks, so, you know, screw them. You know, whatever. Anyway, um, but that also doesn't make sense because Sengoku 
has a human human fruit as well and it's a mythical variant of the daibutsu but sengoku i don't think has ever actually said like i am the user of the human human fruit so maybe the government just thinks he has some crazy powerful fruit that's like daibutsu or whatever they don't know it's actually called human human like the regular like the regular marines don't know what it's called or they gave it a different name i don't know i feel like i'm just grasping at straws here but i'm just trying to i'm just trying to figure out like some reason why chopper's bound is always this low. Like, the government can't be this stupid, you know what I mean? They have to know this is like somebody that has the human human fruit, or he's a mink. Either way, he shouldn't be viewed as just a pet. You know what I mean? So, whatever. Anyway, that's Choppers. So, moving on to the actual properly lowest bounty out of the Straw Hat crew, not counting Choppers' gag bounty, okay? We have Nami, which makes sense. Nami, Brooke, Frankie, and Usopp all had a flat increase of 300 million berries from their previous bounty. This was mentioned by Oda before, how this usually works. You know, when you have a, an emperor as your captain, you know, even if the other crewmates don't really do much, their bounties still increase at like a flat rate. Um, this happened at Dressrosa, where like Nami was not present for the majority of Dressrosa, and so after it was over and Luffy defeated Doflamingo and everything and they got their new bounties, even though Nami didn't really do anything in Dressrosa, uh, her bounty still went up a flat rate of 50 million from 16 to 66, okay? Well, now her bounty has shot up to 366 million. Cat burglar Nami, okay. So, um, this is insane because, uh, like I said, excluding Chopper's bounty, which is a joke, or maybe there might be a reason behind it, Nami has the lowest active real bounty in the Straw Hats, and it is now a bounty that is higher than Luffy's pre Three time skip bounty. Luffy, 300 million when he reached the Sabote Archipelago after Annie's lobby. Big deal, like 300 million. Holy crap, you know what I mean? And the only other person higher in the uh, paradise than that was uh, Kid. Actually, Nami has a higher bounty than Eustace Kid. She has a higher bounty than any of the supernovas pre time skip. Nami does. She's gone mad with power, ladies and gentlemen. It's just, it's just, you know, it shows that how they've grown over the years. They're a Yonko crew now, okay? You can't mess with this, all right? This is fair. This is fair, okay? Nami's reaction is terrifying. She's like, oh my god, it's such a big number. Even I would go after someone with a bounty this huge. Which now makes me think that Nami is, like, after she calms down a bit and she goes back to her room and she just looks at her wanted poster, like, 366 million. I wonder if Nami's gonna sit down and be like, hmm, I wonder if there's some way I can con the Marines out of getting my, like, hmm. Usopp, we're gonna dress you up as a bounty hunter. We're gonna go to the nearest Marine base like you captured me. And then you're gonna turn me over to the Marines. They're gonna give you the money... And then I'm gonna also knock out all the Marines, rob them blind, and then I'm gonna, yeah, okay, we can do this. <laughs> you know Nami would be thinking about some shit like that. She'd be like, how to cash in my own bounty? Hmm. You know, like, there'd be a way to go down with this, okay? Anyway, then we have Brooke. Uh, flat increased 300 million. His previous bounty was 83 million, so now it is 383 million, baby! Soul King solo concert, all right? Soul King, the 383 million dollar skeleton man tour. All right, so he's pretty happy. Then we have Frankie's. Frankie got screwed over out of all of the Straw Hats in this one. Even worse than Chopper. Even worse than Chopper, all right? Now, good news, Frankie, before, he was upset that he was, like, one of the only... He was the only dude at Wano, not Wano, at Dressrosa that actually contributed in the fight whose bounty did not increase over 100 million. So, Usopp was there, Robin was there, Luffy was there, Zoro was there. Their bounties all were over, over 100 million already, or they went over 100 while they were at Dressrosa. Frankie's only rose to 94, so he was very upset, okay? Well, good news, Frankie, your bounty is over 100 million now. It's definitely over 100 million. It's uh, actually 394 million right now, so good for you! We're almost at 400, but um, the bad news is it's not like your picture on the wanted poster. It's actually the, the figurehead of the Thousand Sunny. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so the Sunny! Um, Sunny, you did it! It still has Frankie's name, though, like Cyborg Frankie. The only explanation I can have for this, because this is confusing as hell, the only explanation I can have for this is, 
the intel that the Marines received was like, okay, Cyborg Frankie, he's a menace, ladies and gentlemen. He keeps upgrading himself to get bigger and stronger. He changed himself from a regular human into a battle cyborg at Eni's lobby. Then after the time skip, he changed himself into a complete metal monstrosity. So that's why they took the picture of the Iron Pirate Frankie Shogun. I guess they just assume that the stronger Frankie gets, they ke he keeps upgrading himself. So it's like, oh no, he must have upgraded himself to the actual ship the Straw Hats ride on! I don't know why they would make that conclusion and why they would just go ahead and run with it like it was confirmed. Like, there must have been somebody in the... There must have been somebody in the Marines that's just like, Frankie turned himself into a battleship! And then, like, everybody just believed him and then they went with it, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, um... This actually might be foreshadowing, though, because I've always thought, and I, I, a few other people have as well, like, Frankie's ultimate attack would actually be merging with the Sunny itself, you know? So, like, Frankie goes into the Iron Pirate, and he's like, Iron Pirate, Frankie Shogun, and it's like the final battle at Laugh Tale, and then he, like, connects himself with the Thousand Sunny, and the Sunny transforms into, like, a, it's like the Gao Cannon times ten. It's like that scene in Teen Titans when they were fighting against Slade when he was being controlled by Trigun, they were like zombies, and then Cyborg Borg steps out of Titan's tower, he connects up to it, and he just, giant freaking cannons just up here, he's like, NO ONE'S GETTING IN HERE! Something like that, it's gonna be some shit like that, let me tell you. Okay, so yeah, that, that might actually still happen at some point in the story, but still it makes no, no sense why the Sonny's figurehead is now Frankie's wanted poster, but he's still got 394 million, and if nothing else, they won't be able to recognize him, so whatever. Uh, Frankie's a little bit upset by that, though. Uh, then we have Usopp's, uh, also increases, just flat 300, so we have God Usopp, original bounty of 200 million, now increased to 500 million, the same amount Luffy was at post dress Rosa. Okay, so this is crazy. Usopp now has a 500 million berry bounty, all right? And he's looking at it, and his reaction is like, oh, please don't go up any higher. Please don't go up any higher. You know, he's saying that to two things. He's saying that to the bounty, and he's also saying that to his blood pressure. Please don't go up any higher. You know what I mean? Like that. Usopp is freaking out because he's like, oh man, this is, wow, there's going to be some bounty hunters actually coming after me now. Holy crap. This isn't good. Oh boy. Um, so that was the, that was it for like the flat increases. All the other bounties from this point onward follow, follow a different kind of scheme for each of them, okay? The next big one is Robin's bounty, okay? And I have to say, I just have to say, it is so nice for Robin's bounty to finally begin to reflect how important she is to the Straw Hats and how dangerous the government perceives her. I would have still have preferred for it to even be bigger than this, but we got what we got and I'm okay, all right? Robin's new bounty is 930 million berries, okay? Up from 130 million berries. So an 800 berry, a 800 million berry increase, okay? Huge deal. In fact, I think out of all of the, well, no, because Luffy's doubled from 1.5 to 3 billion, but still, that's a big, that's a big number, okay? And Robin doesn't really seem to be shocked by it at all. And once again, the reason for that is she even mentioned this at Zo when, you know, Nekamamushi and Inuarashi were talking about the road poneglyphs, and they're like, you know, Nico Robin, there's going to be no shortage of dastardly people that want to capture you for their own ends so you can decipher the poneglyphs. And Robin is like, oh, I don't worry about that anymore because I have friends that will protect me and I I'm with them you know what I mean so Robin looks at her bounty and she's like oh they're finally looking like they know that I'm a threat great awesome but eh, I'm okay I know I have the straw hats to help me out I could turn into a demon lady now Robin's got this um, but yeah so I thought Robin right there had the highest bounty out of every uh, every uh, like female character in the series because if you exclude Big Mom because she might be out of the picture right now she might be in a coma the other person that has the highest bounty is smoothie and I did look it up and I forget the number but it was higher than hers unfortunately so Robin now has from what I understand the 
second highest bounty out of any female character in the entire story, right behind Smoothie. And I'll put Smoothie's bounty up here to see what it is. I, I forgot what it was, but it was higher than 930 million. So that's the situation we have right there with Robin. The government looks at her and is like, okay, enough with the pretenses. We need to capture her as quickly as possible. They don't bring up why it all went up as, as high as it did, but I think we can all understand why. Uh, the Straw Hats might bring, in, might bring this up later. They might mention, like, how come your bounty went up so high, Robin? You know, it might be brought up by Luffy or somebody. But um, for right now, we get it. Okay, so 930 million for Robin. Good show, Robin. Bully. Okay, moving on. Now we have, we just get the next three all at once. Okay, we get Sanji's, we get Jinbei's, and we get Zoro's. Okay, in that order. So we have now the fourth highest bounty on the Straw Hat crew is Sanji. Blackfoot Sanji. It doesn't say Sanji Vinsmoke, though. Remember, we don't get to see the actual bounty poster. We just see, like, the narrator coming on and explaining. So, I mean, it might still say Sanji Vinsmoke, or it might have gone back to his previous epithet. Who knows? But it now says, the cook of the crew, Blackleg Sanji, his bounty is 1 billion 32 million. So it's over a billion. Good job. But Sanji's not looking too happy here, okay? Then we get Jinbei's, the third highest bounty of the Straw Hat crew's mighty commanders. Jinbei's bounty, his previous bounty was 438 million, but that was the bounty I, I think he got right after Marine Ford. So, I mean, I, I guess it stayed the same throughout the two-year time skip. Well, whatever, we, because he just joined, you know, so we don't, we don't see his bounty posters as much. He had an older one that was like 77 million, but that was back when Fisher Tiger was still alive. So, you know, whatever. He might have had a different bounty at some point in between, but those are the ones that we're aware of. Anyway, Gene Bay's new bounty is 1 billion. 100 million. Okay, so just really simple, 1.1 billion. There we go. Awesome. Okay. And now we have Zoros. Zoros weird ass bounty for some reason. Okay. Pirate Hunter Zoro. It actually says Swordmaster. Swordmaster Pirate Hunter Zoro. Ooh, Swordmaster. Zoro's reading that and he's just like, "Oh yeah." Okay, here we go. This is what I like to see right here. Zoro's new bounty. 1 billion 100 million, 1,100 berries. Okay, so it's 1 billion, 100 million, 1,100. Weird. Very weird indeed. Like I said, I feel like there should be a pun in there at some point because it's the, the weird numbers at the end. Um, also, I guess it's the Marines like, all right, we got Jinbei and we got Zoro. Who's more of a threat? I'm like, well... Jinbei used to be a warlord and everything, but Zoro has swords. It's like, that's fair. Okay. So we'll give Jinbei a flat 1.1 billion, and then Zoro, maybe 1.2? Nah, nah, nah. He's not worth 1.2. I'm like, alright, how about... How about 1 billion 150 million? Nah, nah, it's not even worth 50 million. And they spend all night whittling it down, like... 1 billion... 101 million? No! Too high! It's like, oh my god, okay, order Chinese, we're gonna be here a while. Three hours later, it's like, okay, okay. How about 1 billion, 100 million, 1,000? Nah, that's too low. God dang! What is gonna make you happy? Okay, 1 billion, 100 million, 1,000 and 100. That's my final offer. You know what? You know what? That works. That works. We'll do that. I'm like, okay, Jesus! Approved! Send it out! You know, like, okay, so that's Zora. I feel like there's a pun, like I said, I just don't know what it is. I mean, you could read one as, like, Ichi in Japanese, so I don't know if it's, like, I don't know. Somebody look into it. Artor will probably know if there's anything. Okay, anyway, so Sanji's on the ground fuming. He's literally on fire. Um, and, you know, you gotta really feel for Sanji here. He's feeling it a lot because, you know, he had a bounty that was higher than Zoro's previous. Uh, okay, so he's like, he had 330 million before this, and Zoro's was 320. So, kind of like a pride cometh before the fall sort of situation with Sanji, where he's like, yeah, I'm on top now. And then they get the new bounty posters, and now he gets knocked down from two all the way down to number four. And so, it's like, oh, that's not cool, right? And so now Zoro's there and he's like, ah, let number four just, you know, have his sour grapes. Meanwhile, I'm number two. I'm gonna be over here enjoying this. Hey, Jinbei, you're number three. How you doing, man? You know what I mean? Like, Jinbei's like, oh, I'm all right. He's like, yeah. So Jinbei's, it's also funny because he's starting to get used to the dynamic of the Straya crew. He's not used to that, you know what I mean? Like, in this sort of setting where they're just chilling out, right? Um, and so then the last shot is Luffy still in the cage with the caption, Straw Hat Luffy, one of the emperors, 
three billion berries, okay? And Luffy's like, I'm hungry, guys. Can you let me out of the cage, please? Also, this is a flashback sort of reminding me of during the Orange Town arc when Luffy was trapped in the cage by Buggy. Very apropos because Buggy is going to be showing up in this chapter next. Okay, so this scene with the Straw Hats ends with uh, Sanji and Zoro, of course, just getting into a fight. You know, Sanji's like, who are you calling number four? And then, you know, Zoro's like, you shouldn't step up to number two so lightly. And so they clash and then, you know, that's the end of the scene. So literally that scene was just there for bounties. Okay, and a little bit of a shenanigans with the straw hats, which was a lot of fun, all right? But now we get to the proper meat of the chapter. We find out what's going on with this cross guild shit, okay? So we now cut over to Kali Bali Island, Buggy's home base of operations for the Buggy's delivery, and it is still in full operation. But wait a second, what happened? You know, the marine ships were invading, and then all of a sudden they just left? What happened? All right, well, we find out what's happening. So all of the random pirates on Buggy's delivery, like the underlings, they're like, wow, that's crazy. Did you see Mihawk? Yeah, he looks so powerful. Did you see that crocodile guy? Yeah, it's nuts. And now, so what happened is, a crocodile and Mihawk arrived at the island, they went into the big top, and they're having a private meeting with Buggy and his, like, the core of his crew, like Alvita, Kabaji, Moji, Galdino, they're all there. And so the, uh, the underlings are outside, they don't know what's going on on the inside, they're like, wow, I bet they're having the most insane business meeting right now, guys. And so we cut in, and we see Buggy on the, on the sofa, and he's just, he has the shit beat out of him. I mean, he has a black eye, he's bleeding, you know, he's just there, and he's like, missing a tooth. And then, you know, he's sitting there on the couch, and then Mihawk is off to one side, holding Yoru at his damn throat and then crocodiles off to the other side you know it's sort of like you know it's sort of like the mafia kind of situation like buggy's sitting on the couch just having a normal like ah, ha, ha. and then these two two guys walk in they're just like mind if we have a seat yeah uh yeah you guys could sit over there nah i think we're just gonna sit right here oh yeah How's that, that 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 feel good to you mihawk oh that feels good to me crocodile you know this couch is so comfy there seems to be a lump in the middle of it though and they just keep kind of like crushing buggy and like guys guys look I know that I owe you some money. <laughs> oh, they, oh God, Buggy. Okay, this is, I would say this is where your luck ran out, but let's be honest here, that's not the case. All right, so here's the situation, all right? Crocodile's looking at him, Mihawk's looking at him like, how the hell are you the emperor of the sea? You know, and, and Mihawk's like, you know, you must be the first person to become an emperor while crying for mercy. Look at you. You're an emperor. You're pathetic. I can't believe this happened to us. Like, you are basically tarnishing our good names now by having you be the emperor, okay? And Buggy's like, I'm so sorry. I'm, guys, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to happen. All right, I'll lick your boots. What do you mean? I'll suck on a lollipop, for God's sake. What do you want me to do for you? You know what I mean? And they're just like, mm, yeah, we're well past that, Buggy. You know, we're well past that. Galdino walks up, Mr. Three, and he's doing the thing that you can imagine he would be doing. He's like, oh, ah, uh, Sir Crocodile, it's so happy that just through a, a mystical twist of fate, I happen to be working for you again. I just wanted to say that it's fantastic. And then Buggy's there and he's just like, oh, screw you, Galdino. So you're just gonna, you're gonna turn traitor on me. And Galdino's like, hey, I never officially joined your crew. I just hung out with you for the last two years and just ate all your food and just, you know, hung out behind the scenes as one of the commanders of Buggy's Delivery, but I never officially joined your crew. So Galdino is very duplicitous, of course, he's going to go back, and they all are, by the way, not just Galdino. We have Alvita, Richie, Kabaji, and Moji all hanging out in the background eating food at their table, and they're just like, all right, well, Buggy's done for. I'm like, yep, so now what? Well, I guess we just work for Crocodile. Yeah, that makes sense. We can't leave. They'd kill us. I'm like, all right. So they're just like so chill with it. They're like buggies. Their boss is getting the crap beat out of him in the background. And just like, where's the money, Buggy? Where is the money? <laughs> it's just like, oh, no, no, no. it's down there. Maybe take another look. Shoving his heads into toilets and stuff. Alvita's in the background like, man, this is some pretty good, this is some pretty good, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, beef tenderloin or whatever. I don't know. Just They're just having a good meal while Buggy's being tortured mafia style in the back room. This is great. <laughs> All right. So we get a little bit, oh, Mr one Daz Bones is there, is there as well. So we get a little bit of a flashback. The first flashback we get is from Mihawk's perspective, okay? So Mihawk remembers back when he was at Kuraigana Island, Gloomy Island, where he was in his castle, the Marines arrived, 
And I guess what happened was he fought against the initial wave of Marines that arrived at his island. He wiped them out. But now he's annoyed because, like I said, he, he was excited at first, like, hmm, it's been a while since I've been the one that's been hunted. He takes his sword out. But now it seems like a few days have passed and he's just like, oh my god, these damn Marines, they're coming to me from every single angle. It never ends, you know? And it's not even fun for him, you know? It's like playing a game where, like, wave after wave after wave comes at you and you're just like, you wipe them out. Okay, next wave. Oh my god. Next wave. Oh my god. It's just annoying after a while, right? And you kind of lose all, like, it loses all fun after after a moment. So it's it's like, okay, you ever play a game called Boxhead Zombie Wars? Okay, this is a game I played way back in high school in the computer lab. It was a lot of fun. You basically, you make like a little fortress and then like a wave after wave of zombies and mummies and, and vampires and shit come at you and you can like upgrade your weapons and your fortress and like your gun turrets and whatever. Like, you play landmines and stuff and you mow down the wave after wave of zombies well somebody gave me a cheat code in this game where I could have like infinite money so it's like at, at first it's a lot of fun but like you're, you're playing the game with an infinite cheat code and it's just like okay big wave comes you wipe them all out another big wave comes you wipe them all out it's like it loses its fun after a while I imagine it's something like that with with Mihawk he has a cheat code turned on you know what I mean so um he decides to leave he decides you know what I'm packing up my stuff I'm leaving Kuraigana Island at the same time that happens he gets a call in the den and Mushy from Crocodile. Crocodile is literally seeking out Mihawk, and he's like, hey there, Mihawk, you know, we knew each other back in our warlord days. I hear you got, you know, taken away from you as well now, so what's it like to not be a warlord? How about this? If you and I teamed up, we would be a terror to be, you know, feared and respected all up and down the Grand Line. You know, you don't trust anybody, I don't trust anybody, that's why we should trust each other. Not sure about the logic, but Mihawk goes along with it. He also drops some interesting lore. Mihawk used to be referred to as the Marine Hunter back in the day. Which I love it because it's a parallel to Zoro being the pirate hunter. That's beautiful. So back in the day, Mihawk in his younger years, you know, went back when he was a little bit more hot-headed and stuff going around. He was just fighting Marines. He was probably fighting Marines to have like a challenge, but then eventually he got a, a, a bounty placed on his head as a pirate because he's going around cutting down Marines and shit. He probably wasn't doing it because he's evil. He was doing it for a challenge, but they still put a bounty on his head either way. And then eventually it's like, all right, you want to be a warlord? And Mihawk's like, fine, I don't have to worry about because he says in this chapter, Mihawk's goal is he's a very neutral kind of party here. Mihawk says, I just want to be peaceful. I like live in peace or like just kind of go wherever I want to go. And we've already gotten the vibe. I've made videos on Mihawk before. That is his ideal here. It's a very neutral kind of perspective, okay? He even says, like, I have no interest in being an emperor. I don't want to be an emperor. I just want to live freely, okay? Uh, maybe Mihawk has the will of D. Mihawk, D wait, no. Wait, Dracul D. Mihawk. That actually does, that works. That sounds pretty good. Dracul D. Mihawk. It could be, maybe. Anyway, so um, Crocodile calls him up. I love how Mihawk is like collecting his his possessions. So we see like his bedroom. We see like where Yoru is in the background with his hat on top of it. He's packing up a book. I wonder what kind of books uh, Mihawk reads. I imagine he would just read Poe all the time. Just like, yes, Mask of the Red Death. Yes, such a tragic story. You know, by the way, that is my favorite short story by Edgar Allan Poe, Mask of the Red Death. I just love the aesthetic of all those different rooms that are like different colors and just it's cool. Anyway, so maybe he reads Poe and he's like collecting his bottle of wine. It's like, oh, I can't bring all the wine with me on the coffin boat. Which which vintage should I bring with me? Hmm. He's like just packing up his stuff and then like for a, he's like packing it up to go stay at a hotel somewhere and then Crocodile calls him. He's like, hey, you want to join up, man? He's like, yeah, I guess so. Why not? Beats the Marines constantly coming to my island. And it's like, it, it implies he's killed a lot of Marines. It implies like, man, they just keep coming to my island. <laughs> so it's just like, yeah. Um, the human drills are out the window, like peeking in like, Mihawk, are you leaving us? You know, I, I wish I wish Mihawk would have brought some of the human drills with him. Maybe he did. We just didn't see them in this chapter. But the, the human drills are like, you know, but you're our friend. You were our boss. And Mihawk has to have this tearful goodbye to the human drills of Kuraigana Island. And just like, just get out of there. I don't love you guys anymore. The human drills are like, well, and they run. <laughs> just like, it's like, I'm going to have to put you guys down. And he takes out Yoru. It's like old yeller or some shit. It's like, no, no, I'm sure that, I'm sure the human drills just stayed on the island or he they maybe some of them left with Mihawk who knows um okay so that's the story with Mihawk that's how Mihawk 
ended up joining the Cross Guild. This was originally 100% an idea formed by Crocodile, which you could expect, okay? Buggy did not come up with this idea. All right, also I would assume Mihawk is the one that came up with the name still. So now we get this from Buggy's perspective. How did this go down? So now Buggy is remembering when the Marines surrounded Kalibali Island. I believe it was Vice Admiral Stainless that was the one that was gonna bring Buggy in. So Buggy's like, well, give him hell, man. And he was about to sneak out the back when right when that happened, Crocodile and Mr. One showed up and just laid waste to the entire Marine fleet. Wiped them all out right then and there, okay? Um, and I don't believe, was Mihawk part of that group? I think he was. Uh, yeah, I think he was. Anyway, so they show up. Uh, keep in mind, interesting point, uh, Crocodile, when he was fighting the Marine ships, his sand seems to have uh, turned uh, black, like armament hockey. Now, I don't know if that's just like, because... Crocodile has like a long black cloak that he always wears and in the scene it looks like the cloak is like he's turning the cloak into sand to like impale the marines so it might just be the the trick of like the way it's shaded but I honestly think this is just Crocodile using armament because it's been two years I think he has armament and observation at this point I was honestly kind of surprised he didn't have that at the beginning of the story I mean he might have had observation I did, made a video about that as well but it, it seems like he has armament right here I'm just gonna go along with it it's not even like the advanced form of armament it's like regular hardening so it's like why not have at least you know crocodile use that okay also it'd be cool if mr one could do that too mr one's there and he has like freddy krueger hands he has like the knives coming out of his fingers and i'm sure those are armament hockeyed up too and he's just slicing through marines like freddy krueger it's awesome okay or like wolverine or something he could literally go like freddy krueger mode or wolverine mode whenever he wanted to okay so i want to see some more from mr one he's a pretty badass character so um, all of Buggy's delivery service is seeing Crocodile and Mr. One just wiping out this marine fleet. And they're like, yeah, the rumors that Crocodile is like a little brother to Buggy, they were true. They came and saved us in our hour of need. Buggy, you're so cool. And Buggy's just sitting there like, oh, that's not good. So what happened was Buggy borrowed money from, from Crocodile. I guess in order to get his buggy's delivery service up and running. So this debunks a theory that buggy in the intermediate of the time skip found Captain John's treasure and then he used the treasure to fund the buggy's delivery. Something must have happened with that. I've been meaning to make a, a video on Captain John's treasure for years. I guess now I can finally make one. But like the idea is that Buggy, I guess, could not find it. So he had to get the startup cash from somewhere else. Yeah, he was a warlord, but I guess they don't get... Just because you're a warlord doesn't mean the government just gives you an endless supply of money for whatever you want to do, right? The whole job is you're a privateer for the government. You work for us to bring in pirates. They might give him some money, but like not a lot. So Buggy literally had to go to Crocodile and be like, I need some startup cash for a small business loan or whatever and crocodile's like all right i'll give it to you but you know here here are the terms here's the interest here's all this stuff you know you got to pay this shit back and buggy of course is like of course and so he gives him the money uh, buggy takes it goes to start up buggy's delivery and now crocodile's coming to collect he's like all right i'm here uh and so this is like keep in mind like Buggy is not part of the Cross Guild yet. This is Crocodile working together with Mr. One and with Mihawk. And he's like, all right, so, you know, Mihawk, let, let's say Mihawk is like, okay, well, what's, what is the next step, Crocodile? He's like, well, the next step is I got to stop over by Kalibali Island and collect some funds from a uh, investor. And then after that, we're going to start our own company. So Crocodile had no plans on inviting Buggy over to join their organization. Of course he didn't. So he's like, I'm just going to roll over there, get the money he owes me, and then skip out. Buggy doesn't have the money, though. He's like, okay. So listen, um, <laughs> it might look... Like, the Buggy's delivery service is up and running, and we have this giant island with, you know, we have all the food and people, trapeze artists jumping around and everything, and, uh, yeah. Uh, turns out, though, I have a lot of mouths to feed, Crocodile, so, you know, a lot of the money goes to that, and, then, oh, taxes. You know, the IRS in the One Piece world, you don't want to piss them off, you know what I mean? So, it's like, I'm paying that, and just, uh, man, you know, it's, it's crazy, man. Richie's over here, he takes a lot of food, Richie's the lion, he's 
like, whoa. He's like, I have to feed him. Yeah, you got to take care of him. He has allergies. We have to get him medication for the allergies, and those are really expensive. So Buggy's just coming up with all these excuses, like I, he can't pay Crocodile the money. Um, and so Crocodile kind of looks right. He's like, we're, we're prison buddies, right? We busted out of Impale Down together. Remember that adventure we had? Uh, Crocodile's not buying it. He's just like... Well, I guess I could just sell you. <laughs> just, I guess I could just sell you. And he's like, I don't know. Let's not. Let's not go into this now, right? So that brings us to the current era. Okay. So what Buggy did, his his bargaining plan was this. He's like, okay, I can't give you the money, but how about you and Mihawk work out of my my business. You work out of the, my island. So I'll give you full reign of my island and my home base and my subordinates. And hey, we are a great advertising firm, okay? We have advertising experts. We have printers. We can print out like uh, flyers of your new organization. We can send them to all over the world. We, I'm your marketing guy, if nothing else, right? And so remember, this, this did not include Buggy becoming the Yonko, or Buggy saying, like, I'll be the boss. Buggy relented. He gave in to Crocodile and Mihawk immediately, as of course Buggy would. And he's like, tell you what, tell you what, tell you what. You can, you can use my base. You can use my men to print whatever. You can use them to fight. I don't care. It's all yours. It's all yours. And so Crocodile was like, all right, it's not the perfect deal, but... Okay, I guess so. I guess that sounds, we can, we can agree with that, all right? The thing that really pissed them off, that tipped it over the edge, was that um, when Buggy ordered his men to like, all right, men, you're going to make the Cross Guild flyer and you're going to send it all over the world. So I was, I was wondering about that when I made the video. Like, how did the Cross Guild, did someone print that? And I'm like, yeah, it was Buggy's crew. So he told Buggy's crew, like, hey, guys, go and print it up and just send it to the world. And the, like, okay, Captain Buggy, we'll do that. But without Buggy's knowledge, they printed out the cross guild with Buggy in the center looking all demonic. Like, <laughs> and then Crocodile off to the side, Mihawk off to the side. That was Buggy's crew that did that because they're so infatuated with Buggy. And Buggy did not tell them otherwise. He's like, hey guys, guys, don't put me on the flyer. Just put Mihawk and Crocodile and maybe Mr. One on the flyer. Don't put me on the flyer. Okay, it's so cool. He didn't say that. He just said, draw up a flyer for the cross guild. They just assumed. Buggy was the head of the Cross Guild, so they printed it out. It's like, what did you do? And by the time Buggy found out about it, like, what did you do? It's like, we had to make you look awesome, Captain Buggy. What? You know, recall this immediately. We've already sent them out all over the world. No! That's the reason why he's getting the crap beat out of him on the couch right now, okay? That's the reason, all right? So it's, it's not good. It's not great. Um, but, but... Mihawk kind of comes to a realization here. He kind of realizes something. He's like, wait a moment. Well, wait, actually, hold on. Should we do bounties first or should we do this first? You know, let, let's, let's do bounties first because we get the bounties next. Let's just go in order. Okay, okay. So now we cut over to Marine HQ where brand new, the intelligence officer, he's looking at the Cross Guild flyer. He's talking about it. He's like, listen, the Cross Guild is this new organization. A lot of underground uh, uh, organizations are also funding them, which I think is going to tie back to like Drug Peklo and all the other members of the underworld that we saw, you know, during uh, the Tea Party. Okay, so like other, you know, uh, black market organizations are funding the Cross Guild and their marine bounty initiative, okay? Like putting the bounties on marines' heads and all that kind of jazz, right? So we got some problems there. Uh, Brand New also mentions the Revolutionary Army is really riled up right now because everything going on with Sabo, you know, the Flame Emperor. So he's like, I think we should take the Cross Guild very seriously, guys. And then we see Crocodile's new bounty, 1,965,000,000, up from his previous 81 million that was frozen, okay? So remember, that was frozen a very long time long time ago. Crocodile was an emp uh, was a warlord for a while. Okay, I like to think that it was during when, like, after he got defeated by Whitebeard in his early 20s, uh, that's when he, like, not long after that, he became a warlord and his bounty was frozen at 81. It might even have been before that, right? So it was frozen for a long time. And then after Baroque Works was over, he didn't get a new bounty because he just got thrown right in prison. And then after he was released from prison, he probably got a new ha active bounty before this one, but we don't know what that was. I actually, I, I wanted to ask you guys a question about Crocodile really quick. Um, so let's say... Crocodile's actions as being Mr. Zero and, you know, the leader of Baroque Works was known. 
while he was, you know, doing it, while he was active. What bounty do you think Crocodile should have had at that point in the story? Like, when Crocodile fought against Luffy at Alabasta when he was taking over the country, what should have been his active bounty if the Marines knew about what he was doing? Okay, because it wouldn't have been 81 million. It would have probably been at least over, I, I would think back then, maybe 100, 200 million, something like that. Maybe, maybe 150 million or something when he was like the head of Baroque Works, maybe. So I just wanted to ask you guys that. Like, what did you think Crocodile's like true bounty should have been then? And then also, I guess what would have his bounty have been right after he defected from uh, Impel Down? He, he escaped, and now his new bounty is one billion nine hundred sixty-five million. So you know it's not quite Yonko level, but it's pretty close. It's a higher bounty than Marco. It's a higher bounty than King and Queen, Katakuri, any of the Yonko commanders. It's a really high freaking bounty. Okay. Then we have Mihawk. It was mentioned by me by uh, brand new Mihawk is a former warlord that is a swordsman that even surpasses red-haired Shanks in skill. We already kind of assume this because Shanks and Mihawk always fought, but Mihawk is the one that's considered the greatest in the world. So we assume that okay. I like to think with that during Mihawk and Shanks' last big battle, the one that Whitebeard talked about, you know, it was like, if you could see the battle between, you know, you and Mihawk, they would have been yapping about it till the end of the century, you know what I mean? I think that was the last battle they had, that was before Shanks lost an arm and Mihawk lost interest after that. I think in that epic duel, Mihawk won. Mihawk won, it was like maybe a duel that lasted like 12 straight days and nights, but after it was over and done with, Mihawk was the one that had Shanks on the ground and he was like, yield. It's like, I yield. And it's like, and then at that moment, Mihawk became the greatest swordsman in the world. Okay, and they haven't fought since, so who knows. But because he is the greatest swordsman in the world, he has a bounty that's even higher than uh, Buggy's bounty as an emperor, and I think that's fair, okay? Three billion five hundred and ninety million berries. Whew. That's a lot of candy. <laughs> That's a lot of cotton candy for Chopper right there. That's a lot of chocolate. How many, uh, how many large-sized Hawaiian pizzas are, is that? How many large-sized Italian, not Italian, how many large-sized Hawaiian pizzas can I get for that? I like pineapple on pizza. Whatever. I have some upstairs, actually. I'm going to have it right after I'm done with this review. Um, but anyway, that's, that's a lot right there. Okay, so there you go. It's a bounty that is at the same level as a Yonko. You know what I mean? Luffy has a 3 billion bounty, and he's considered an emperor. Blackbeard had a 2.2 .2 billion bounty. He was considered an emperor. Mihawk is right in there with that level. Even though he isn't considered the emperor, they, they assume Buggy is the mastermind, I guess, just from the fact that, like, look, even though Buggy is the mastermind here, it's like... They have to give Mihawk that bounty. They have to. He's the greatest swordsman in the entire damn world, okay? That has a pedigree with it that it's like, it doesn't matter if he's answering to somebody else. He's dangerous enough that he deserves that, okay? Um, you couldn't just up it to 3.6, though, could you? You had to stop it. Okay, we should give Mihawk 3,600,000,000. Nah, 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 nah. That's too high. Once again, might be a pun. Anyway, and then finally we have Buggy, the bombastic clown, the world-renowned devious jester or whatever, with a bounty of 3,109,000,000 berries. So that is a quite a large increase since the 15 million he had, because that was 15 million, you know, at Orange Town, and then he was thrown in Impel Down, so his bounty was deactivated, and then he broke out, became a warlord, so it was frozen, and now boom, he went from 15 million to 300, 3 billion 189 million. That's that's also quite a bit an amount of Hawaiian pizzas right there. That's how we're gonna measure bounties from now on in terms of Hawaiian pizzas. Um, so yeah, um, I also, by the way, I now finally understand what Buggy's Wanted poster looks like. I was so confused when we first saw his Wanted poster um, at the end a couple of chapters ago, like when it was first revealed. It looked like he was sticking out his tongue and he had like a ball that he was like bouncing on his tongue or something like a jester would or something, right? I finally get it. His mouth is open, his tongue is sticking out, but his hand is like doing this. So I finally get it now that I see the full picture. Maybe you noticed that already. I didn't realize, but now, now I notice. He's like holding his hand out like this while I like sticking his tongue out. You know what I mean? All right, whatever. Anyway, he's a very dangerous individual. You cannot overlook this clown. You know what I mean? So, okay. So that's the cross skill, ladies and gentlemen. So, oh, I should add all these up. Oh God, I suck at math. Oh, this is going to be a problem. Okay. <sighs> okay. I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming, guys. All right, so... 
I'm gonna go get a calculator. <laughs> I'm gonna go get a calculator. My phone's right over here. Might as well not uh, not try to tempt fate here. All right, let's 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 see what we got here. Let's crunch the numbers on these bounties. All right, let's do the cross guild. Then let's do the straw hats after this. Uh, zero, zero. Okay, so the total added bounty of all of the cross guild members is 8 billion 744 million. 8 billion. We are, we are really getting close to 10 billion territory, and I guarantee you, I'm pretty sure the Straw Hats have already broken through that, so we'll get to them. But, okay, 8 billion 744 million for the Cross Guild. That's, that's a lot. So now let's go back to the Straw Hats really quick and see what they're getting. Let's start with Chopper. Let's start with the largest bounty first. Let's start with Chopper. 1,000 berries. Uh, and then we have Zoros, 1-1, one, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero. Okay, and then we have, oh, okay, it's actually not. All right, then we add the three billion for Luffy. Okay, it, their bounty is eight billion, eight hundred and five million, two thousand one hundred berries. Okay, the combined bounty of the Straw Hat crew. Uh, I've already forgotten the other number from the cross guild. So, um, yeah, they're all up, they're all both around 8 billion though. We're, we're, we're getting around that number where it's like the upper 8 billions are like the strongest crews we've seen so far. So cross guild and the strats right around that. I think the strats do have a higher number than the cross guild, but yeah. All right. So those are their bounties. And now we cut over to see Mihawk coming to the realization that like, this might actually work in our benefit, okay? Because Crocodile is like, well, what does that mean? He's like, we can't just let him be the emperor. I'm not gonna let the world think that he's our boss. And Mihawk's like, well, hold on here a second, Crocodile. Think about it. Like, now he's gonna get all of the, the flack. The government's gonna be chasing after him. Worst comes to worst, if something happens, we can skip out and they'll probably go after Buggy instead. Let him have the damn target on his back. And you know, Mihawk's like, I have no interest in being an emperor. I have no interest in doing anything like that. I just wanna live freely, okay, without the Marines constantly chasing me down. That's what I want. And so Crocodile's like, wait a second. That actually does make sense. So that's, that's the, I mean, it, it's sort of in a roundabout way, but it did end in the way that I thought it was going to, where I thought originally Crocodile was like, we'll make Buggy our leader because then he'll be the one that everybody looks to. But so that did happen. That just wasn't their first plan, but it didn't end up occurring. So I'm like, that's so cool, right? Okay, so Meowth's like, yeah, let him have the freaking target on his back and then they'll go after him. Meanwhile, we can kind of run the place in the shadows. You know, I was like, you're okay with that, right, Buggy? I'm like, yes, of course, sir, I'm okay with that. I'll lick your shoes. Get away from me. He's like, whatever, you're pathetic, but you're pathetic but you know we can utilize you for this organization all right so now buggy with his grand you know he, he appears in the balcony over the whole buggy's deliver and he's like <coughs> men welcome to the new cross guild we will now introduce our new executives and then there's crocodile there and there's mihawk and everyone's like ah crocodile it's like oh mihawk senpai you know and then he's like oh man look at buggy look at our boss up there he's weeping tears of joy i'm glad i joined the buggy's delivery man and then buggy's up there of course crying like oh what's gonna happen to me after this i'm gonna die aren't i like this is like the beginning of the end buggy can see it it's like he doesn't know where this is gonna end all right i'm either gonna be abandoned by these two and locked in level six for the rest of my life or executed by the marines or these two are gonna kill me whatever something's gonna happen so buggy's not really happy about the situation but that's that's the whole story of how the cross guild came to be and now he's like, you know, our new age, we'll take over the, you know, we'll, we'll you know, take out the Marines and all that jazz. Okay, that's, that's their main goal, I guess. The main goal is not to find the One Piece or anything. It's just to wipe out the Marines, like a counter-Marine sort of organization. So we'll see where that goes. All right, so uh, last scene of the chapter. We cut over to Kamabaka Kingdom, which is the current headquarters of the Revolutionary Army. Uh, Morley, Karasu, and Lindbergh have all made it back safe and sound. However, Sabo is not with them. However, they say, you know, Sabo, he's still okay. He's not dead or anything. Uh, he's just not with us right now. Uh, Ivankov is there and just like, oh, it's nothing but more than a miracle that you arrived. Hee-haw! I love Ivankov. I'm glad to see Ivankov back in the story. Um, Dragon is there looking very solemn. He's, I mean, more solemn than usual, right? And uh, Koala kind of walks over to him and just like, Dragon, are you okay? And uh, Dragon, and I have to do the uh, the, the Christian Bale uh, Batman voice here. He's like, I'm Dragon. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> He's like, I gotta tell you something, Koala. 
I don't care if Sabu's... I'm, I'm glad he's alive. But I don't care what happened. If he truly did kill King Cobra, I'll never forgive him. I'm Batman. You know, okay. So, at that moment, we have uh, Kuma there. And Kuma is back in his normal outfit, but he's still a PX-0. So, Dragon walks over to Kuma and he's like, Kuma, tell me what you saw. And Kuma's like in a robot voice. He's like, yes, master, I will reveal all. So he's still, I imagine he's been programmed that like anybody that gives him an order, he carries it out because he was a member. He was working for the, uh, the, the Celestial Dragons, right? Now this could still be Vegapunk. This could still be Vegapunk like, I'm going to issue him an order to take orders from anybody that gives him an order, right? And so that way, maybe if he was captured by the revolutionaries, maybe Dragon could still get information out of him, okay? Because otherwise, you feel Vegapunk could have programmed it like he'll only take orders from Celestial Dragons or something like that. But no, he the way that Vegapunk programmed him was he gives orders to anybody. Or maybe to just the Celestial Dragons and to um, Dragon. I don't know. But, you know, Kuma's like, yes. Master, I will reveal all. And so Dragon is just like, oh god, this is so sad. You know? So at that moment, the Den Den Mushi of the Revolutionary Army rings. And they're like, who's it gonna be? It could be Sabo. Now we cut over to Marine HQ, where they're listening in. They're wiretapping on the Revolutionary Army. They're like, a, a Den Den Mushi call is being sent to the Kamabaka Kingdom. And so they know where the Revolutionary Army is based, I guess. And they're like, okay, listen in. It could be Sabo. And then Dragon answers. And then, oh, oh Koala is the one that answers. Koala answers, and she's like, "Yes, hello, this is Koala." And then you just hear over the Denden Den Mushi. You don't see the Denden Den Mushi's eyes. This is very, very important because the Denden Den Mushi take on the appearance of whoever is talking. So Oda made a point to not show what the Denden Den Mushi's eyes looked like. Okay, but then the voice on the other end of the Denden Den Mushi is, "It's Sabo." End of chapter. Break next week. Okay, a couple of things. We don't get to see Koala's reaction to the voice, okay? I'm assuming it is Sabo's voice. That doesn't mean it's Sabo. There are a few people in this world that can change appearances and voice. Uh, now, obviously, Mr. Two Bon Clay is the most obvious one, but not even him, but Katarina Davon who has the power of the mythical uh, zone, the Kitsune, which allows her to transform into people like we saw transforming into Absalom, okay? So, we don't see the face, and Sabo's calling, and it's very ominous. I don't think this is Sabo. Now, it could be. It could be like, this is Sabo, I have some bad news. It could be something like that, and it's very ominous, but the fact that Oda's not showing the eyes, and he's also not showing Koala's reaction, you know? There's a couple of other things that are weird about this, too. Number one, the Revolutionary Army has the white Denden Den Mushi, which if you don't remember what the white version of the Denden Den Mushi does, it blocks wiretapping. You take the white Denden Den Mushi, you attach it to a regular Denden Den Mushi, and you can't you know, be wiretapped. You can't listen in. So we see the Marines listening in to this conversation. Why is the Revolutionary Army not using the, the block of the wiretap or whatever? That's a little weird. And also, I would imagine, like, this is a very... This is the Revolutionary Army. This is like an organization that's literally fighting against the world government. I would imagine they would have a code or something, you know? It wouldn't just be like, da 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 who is it? Ah, oh, hey, how you doing, Dragon? It's just me, Sabo, just hanging out here on the beach. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know that I got the classified documents all ready to go. I'll send them to you. All right, later, Dragon. Bye. Click. No, no, no. That doesn't sound like how they would answer phones. It sounds like, I don't know, it just sounds like the, the Revolutionary Army should have something like you call them up like you call the number, and it's just like da-da-da-da-da. Hey there, how you doing, South Blue Pizzeria? How may I help you today? Would you like to try the Hawaiian pizza special? Be like... The pig is in the poke. Be like, Sabo, Secret Agent Sabo, double OS, nice to meet you. Your new assignment is, it, it feels like it should be something like that, right? It, at least a code number. It'd be like, code 0456. You know, it's like, it should be something like that. It shouldn't just be like, tsk. hi, this is Koala with the Revolutionary Army. Tsk. Koala, it's me, Sabo. Like, it feels like it, it, there should be more to it than that, all right? So, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this is... 
the Revolutionary Army messing around with something here. And also, this might not be Sabo. This might be uh, Blackbeard or somebody. Uh, I don't think it's the Marines pretending to be Sabo. No, because the Marines are like, you know, it might be the Flame Emperor. Okay, so it's not the Marines that are doing this. It might be Blackbeard, but the Revolutionaries also might be doing something here. Because Blackbeard was the one that Burgess was at, you know, uh, Baltimore. And not Baltimore, uh, Baltigo, sorry. They're the ones that found Baltigo, and then they had to leave. Okay, so I bet the Revolutionary Army is very wary of Blackbeard right now because they had to abandon their previous base because of Blackbeard, okay, because they found them, right? So, I'm just saying, like, they might know that Katarina Davon maybe transformed into Sabo, and they're like, okay, okay, we're going to give them some false information or something like that, right? So maybe this conversation with Sabo is like Katarina Davon pretending to be Sabo. It could be like, yeah, uh, where are you guys at right now? And then Koala's like, oh, we're at blah 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 island and it's like you could lie you could set up like a you know a whatever you could do you could do a lot of stuff you see where this is going uh you've seen spy movies before i'm seeing i'm, I'm, I'm assuming so yeah um that's the chapter though that's the end of the chapter break next week unfortunate but we'll see where that goes um and this is kicking off the new moment like we kind of expected this this is in between arcs now uh so we got the bounties oda got that all resolved and now i guess the remainder of this maybe next chapter might be that like like in the in between part we still don't know where the straw hats like the island where they're going like what the name of it is. It might be Sphinx. We don't know. Uh, we still don't know that yet. So um, I'm assuming next chapter is going to be all about the revolutionaries. And then maybe the chapter after that will be focused on the Straw Hats arriving at their next destination. Maybe something like that. All right. Well, uh, there's a lot of stuff to unpack with the bounties and all that, but that'll be in separate videos. And then the Cross Guild. Thanks for watching, everybody. This was a long video, but this was a lot of numbers. And so that's how it goes. All right. Thank you, Oda. And now I need to replace one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, at least ten wanted posters back here. <sighs> All right. Later.